Hey guys, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we're going to be going over the primary weapon and its incarnate form, the Soma Prime. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits, meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. That would be things like Warframes using abilities, pets putting statuses on enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon built out by itself and I let the viewers make their own intelligent conclusions about adding those external things. So the Soma Prime was suggested to us by commenter Optronics117. And he actually made two suggestions at the time. He wanted to see the Tenora and the Soma, or the Tenora Prime and the Soma Prime. Uh, and he wanted like a comparison of them and, and to see like which one was better. So we did the Tenora last week. And uh, if you're watching Optronics, the Tenora, you probably watched that video already, but if you don't remember, the Tenora scored 701 kills in 10 minutes. So we're, we're hoping that this beats it. I'm pretty sure it will, but uh, we're hoping that this one beats it. So the top commenter of the last video was Psykite, and the first commenter of the last video was Silver44. Okay, let's get into the Soma here. Soma Prime, I should say. So the Soma Prime is a machine gun. And its incarnate form turns it into a shotgun machine gun. Turns it into like an automatic shotgun that is very tight in the pellet. So it, it almost still feels like a machine gun because it, like the pellets are so tight that it doesn't really feel like a shotgun. But it's technically a shotgun because it gets crazy multi-shot with it. Okay, let's go into the build here. And we're going to explain uh, interesting and unique things about the Soma Prime. So the Soma Prime is going to require a uh, spool up time. So a lot of like the machine guns in the game, we've saw it with the, with the Tenora as well, uh, require a spool up time where, where you finally reach your full fire rate. So it's going to take four shots before you reach your full fire rate. And you're going to start initially at 25% of your listed fire rate. It's not terrible on Soma because it has a ammo uh, or has a magazine of 200 rounds. And you're mostly just going to be holding the... Uh, the left click down and blazing away so you're not that spool up is not really going to affect you most of the time uh and i already said the incarnate is a full auto shotgun with a tight spread okie dokie i think that's about it for interesting things about the soma right i'm pretty sure well i, I guess we can go over the differences between the uh, soma prime regular and the soma prime incarnate okay so if you look here the soma prime with all of our mods that we have here it's at 90 uh, crit chance, 7.9 crit multiplier, and 22 status. Okay? Just remember those numbers. 90, 7.9, and 22. All right, let's go down to the incarnate form. All right, so it's 30 crit chance with all of these mods. Oh, my goodness. 8.8 uh, .8 crit multiplier, which is actually more. And less status chance because you're shooting more pellets. So this one, the multi-shot is 14.4, uh, 14 .4, I should say. And the non-incarnate was 1.8. Of course, without, you know, conditionals stacked up. But So there's a lot of multi-shot in the Soma Prime's incarnate form. But you pay for it because your crit chance is garbage. The base crit chance is 10%. Okay, so... Uh, you're still incentivized to go crit, though, because you have really high crit multiplier. So this is kind of like a Kuva Nucor-esque kind of a weapon where you wouldn't think you would want to go crit chance on a weapon that only has a 10% crit chance, but they incentivize you by giving it a lot of crit multiplier. Um, and because of that, I did a lot, a lot of testing this morning. Because of that, they're both built out the exact same way. It's just that you are going to value stats differently for Rivens on both of these builds. On the Incarnan, you're going to value multi-shot the most because you have a higher base multi-shot. So any percentage of multi-shot is going to be godlike for the Incarnan. And on the non-Incarnan, you're going to uh, value crit damage and weirdly magazine size. <laughs> Magazine size is really good on the non-incarnate. Um, and it's good, It's going to be because of one of the mods we use uh, later on. We'll get to it. Now, that's not to say that you still don't want multi-shot on the non-incarnate. I, I would still love to have multi-shot on the non-incarnate. 
You know, uh, I would still love to have crit damage on the uh, in Cardin form. So you're just going to value um, stats more on one than the other. And that's, of course, if you have a ribbon. So if you don't, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, let's get into the mods. So we're going to use Galvanized Chamber for multi-shot. Galvanized Scope for critical chance. Hadasatya. Hadasatya is a special mod that only the Soma Prime can use. Um, and what it does, each hit increases your critical chance by 1.2% and it resets upon reloading or holstering. It also resets when you go in and out of Incarnate Form. So this works and stacks up both in and out of Incarnate Form. That's why I'm saying like the, if you want to build for the non-Incarnate, you still use the same mod. And if you build for the Incarnate, you still use the same mod. Um, so it's going to work in both modes. Its cap is at 500% critical chance. And um, just take a look at the wording. Each hit increases critical chance okay so there's different ways you can actually maximize the amount of hits you do the first and easiest way is just aim carefully right like don't be dumping rounds into the sky uh, you can do that by limiting your fire rate or not using a fire rate mod on our weapon we don't use a fire rate mod the other ways the two other ways that you can uh, uh, increase this a lot is punch through Punch through will let you hit multiple targets per bullet. And multi shot. Multi shot will shoot more bullets per bullet. Yeah, I think that's a good way to say it. <laughs> so, uh, Hadasatya is very powerful. Um, in the non incarnate form, on my testing, on average, I was a full 500% critical after about 150 rounds most of the time. So I only had another 50 rounds at the full 500% uh, critical, because remember, we have a magazine of 200. So on the non-incarnate, it, it takes about 150 rounds to be at full Hadasatya, which is why on the non-incarnate, if you get a ribbon, you actually kind of want to start valuing... Um, uh, magazine size more because if you can get a magazine increase of like let's say a hundred rounds and now you have 300 rounds well 150 will get you into full hadasatya and the other 150 can be at that full 500 percent critical from hadasatya uh, there's also a mod we can use let me just type in magazine size magazine size Prime Magazine Warp, 55% magazine capacity. This is a really good mod, and it, it was super close for me to put this on uh, the weapon over Bladed Rounds, which we'll, we'll get to after Hadasatya. Um, but I do like Bladed Rounds better. Bladed Rounds works all of the time on every bullet you fire, whereas Prime Magazine Warp is just going to increase your magazine. And so, like, the last part of your magazine is going to be more powerful because of Hadasatya. So... They're both probably about the same. You could probably use Prime Magazine Warp over Bladed Rounds and you would get a similar uh, result in like kill per minute. But if you had a Riven that somehow was able to compress mods, like maybe you had a Riven that put Viral all in one mod slot, like you got a Riven with Toxic and Cold, and you had a free mod slot after that, um, you definitely use Prime Magazine Warp. Like this is this is the mod that is competing to be on this build. Right, or if you decide to do Prime Magazine Warp, and you get an extra mod slot, then you put Bladed Rounds. Bladed Rounds is competing to be on this build too. So uh, either one you go with. If you are able to compress mods with a Riven, you put you put one of these on. That way you have both of them. All right. Now in the uh, Incarnate form, because of the crazy multi shot. You actually fill Hadasatya up in only like 25 to 50 shots. So you have like 150 shots of your magazine where you're at full 500% critical. It's just that because of the low base critical chance, that's still not that much. But the, uh, the Incarnate form magazine capacity is less important because you are at full Hadasatya quicker. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I think we can move on from, from this weird named mod. 
Okay, uh, next slot here, we have Bladed Rounds. This is going to increase our critical damage. This weapon has above average critical damage, like well, well above aver average critical damage. So any kind of percentage to critical damage is huge. Um, so Bladed Rounds is absolutely amazing. Again, on this slot, you can decide to go with the uh, Magazine Capacity 1-2. They both kind of compete for the same slot. They they both will, will give you about the same damage numbers, uh, kill per minute numbers at the end of the day. Um, so, you decide. In the next two slots, we're going to go for Crit Chance, Crit Damage. So, we have the Critical Delay for our Crit Chance. And we have Vital Sense for our Crit Damage. And then we're going to go in the next two slots for Viral. We have Malignant Force for the 60-60 Toxin, and we have Rhyme Rounds for the 60-60 Cold. So on this weapon, I was really uh, torn. I was thinking of using Primed Cryo Rounds over Rhyme Rounds, but the status chance is pretty dookie. Like, even with both 60-60s, the status chance is 22%. 22% on a fast-firing weapon... Viral is okay with that. Like, if you were looking at all the elements, like, what element doesn't mind only getting put on once in a while? Well, Viral does, right? Like, one, a, even a single stack of Viral is 100% uh, damage to health. So, like, Viral is completely fine with a 22% status on a fast-firing weapon. Um, so that's why we go Viral here. Uh, but, I mean, without the 60-60s, like, if we go uh, with the Prime Cryo... The, st the status chance is really, really bad. Uh, so I, I, f I feel like the, the better option is to go with both 60-60s here. Uh, the other reason to go with both 60-60s is when you switch into the Incarnate mode, uh, the Slash waiting is actually quite good on the Incarnate mode. So, I mean, it's going to be under Viral, but it's going to be pretty good on the Incarnate mode. If you went with um, Prime Cryo Rounds, your waiting is going to be like way, 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 way up there, where you're never going to get a natural Slash. Um... So that's another reason to use the 260-60s instead of Prime Cryo. Alright, in the uh, Exilus slot here, we're going to have Stabilizer. The Exilus is another slot that we have to talk a lot about. So there's two good mods for this. There's Stabilizer for Weapon Recoil, and there's Vigilante Supplies. 5%... This gives you some extra ammo, you don't really need the ammo part of it. But 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons we're going to be shoot we have a very fast firing weapon the incarnate mode has crazy multi-shot so you could get a lot of value out of vigilante supplies okay vigilante supplies is amazing on this weapon um now here is the thing this weapon has disgusting recoil like you know how in the settings there's an option to remove screen shake well soma prime has screen shake built into it <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Even if you remove screen shake from your damn settings, it's like you get it back with Soma Prime. So to completely remove screen shake, you need to have um, negative weapon recoil in two different places, okay? You need to have it in two different places. There are three places where you can have negative weapon recoil. There is the arcane slot with primary deadhead, which gives you negative weapon recoil. There's the Exilus slot, which has access to Stabilizer, which gives you negative recoil. And then there is the Evolution, which we'll get to after this, that also has negative uh, weapon recoil. So, two out of three of those really should be negative recoil. Deadhead is pretty much always going to be on the weapon, so you have to decide whether you want Vigilante Supplies here, and then use your Evolution for negative recoil. Or do you want the evolution that increases your accuracy and then you use stabilizer? I like the accuracy one, but but don't discount vigilante supplies and, and not using the ac accuracy evolution and uh, using the negative recoil on the evolution there too. So that, that's really up to you. Just keep in mind, you're going to have to have negative re recoil on two different of, of those uh, areas. Um, un unless you're a crazy person and you like li living with screen shake. If that's the case, then you're a special kind of person, and I commend you. All right. Um, next, in the arcane slot, we're going to have primary deadhead. Primary deadhead is going to give us a 360% flat damage increase, 30% uh, headshot multiplier, and negative weapon recoil. All righty. Um, that is everything about the Soma Prime. I'm going to go over the evolutions next here. 
Alrighty. So, and I want to talk about the evolutions too, because like even on the Sober Prime, even if you decide not to use the Incarnate mode and you're just going to go full uh, uh, non-Incarnate, you still want to get the Incarnate adapter because all of these like little buffs that you get still work on the on the uh, non-Incarnate. So, all right. Uh, so first evolution is that you've just unlocked the evolution. Congratulations. The second evolution, we are going to go for Fortress Salvo. Increases base damage by plus 12%. Base damage is nice. That's really cool. And with an armor over 450, we get plus 4 punch through. Now, remember what we were saying about punch through. Punch through is godly on this weapon because of Hadasatya. So, that's why I feel like Fortress Salvo is the best uh, second evolution pick. Unfortunately, it means that you're probably going to have to play a, a health and armor Warframe or a Warframe that... Um, starts with high base armor like i think valkyr starts with high base armor or invest like a couple of armor uh shards to activate fortress salvo um, i play a lot of health and armor frames so, like this for me is no no issue but if you're like a person that only ever plays shield gate like this could be an issue the other one here uh fortifying bloodshed increases base damage by plus 10 that's pretty good too and on a slash status kill you get plus 100% overshield. That's that's really good. That's actually really good for survivability. Overshield, even a small amount of overshield, like right, like even if you only had 100 overshield and you get whacked by a big like million damage attack, you're still going to get a 0 0.5 second shield gate. So fortifying bloodshed's really good. It's just it this changes the build up to be a dot build, and that's not what we're building this for. Uh, but if you were to completely change the build up, maybe make a build of your own and make it dot heavy, this is really good for survivability. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, on our build, this doesn't do much, but, you know, you could make another build that this is an absolutely valid choice and really a powerful one. So, but yeah, in the, in the, the first or second evolution here, we're going to go with Fortress Salvo for that punch through. Alrighty, in the third evolution slot and uh, and the one that usually has pretty stupid stuff right like this is just what, recoil accuracy and reload speed um, this is the one actually that you have to consider the most because accuracy is nice especially for the non-incarnate for the incarnate that's a shotgun it's a little bit less important but for the non-incarnate accuracy is nice because you don't want to be wasting shots because you want every shot to actually hit something to be increasing your Hadasatya. And the um, non-incarnate, like, it is a little bit not... It's not pinpoint accurate. It does kind of spray all over the place. So accuracy helps the non-incarnate a lot. But, like we were talking about before, you need negative weapon recoil in at least two of those spots to completely remove the um, uh, screen shake on this weapon. So... If you did not choose Stabilizer, you really need to go with uh, Negative Recoil here, and then you can't get the Accuracy. But if you went with the... Uh, I, ho I, ho I hope I'm saying this right. If you went with Vigilante Supplies... No, if you went with, with Vigilante Supplies, you need to pick uh, Recoil here. And if you went with... Um, uh, the negative recoil, then you could pick accuracy. I, I think that's the best way to say it. I am confusing the hell out of myself. So, uh, the other one here, rapid reinforcement, eh, plus 50 reload speed. The the Soma Prime does have a long reload, but it has 200 friggin' shots in the magazine. It's like, you're not going to reload that often. And when you are reloading, you could just like use that time while you're reloading to reposition. So it's not that big of a deal that you have a long reload. So I feel like this is the weakest one. Um, but it's still valid, right? It's it's still a, an okay thing. On a weapon that has a long reload, and the reload also affects how how fast you go into Incarnate, like, this isn't horrible. I just think that these two picks are the better picks. Okay, in the uh, fourth evolution slot here, we're going to be going with Zeroed In. Increased base critical damage multiplier by 0 0.6. Doesn't seem like a lot, but this is base critical damage multiplier. Uh, everything gets scaled off a of base, uh, base whatever, you know, base damage, base critical damage, base critical chance. So the fact that this is base critical damage is very powerful. Fatal, fa uh, fatal Affliction plus 40% direct damage per status type affecting the target. This weapon has garbage uh, status chance, so not very good. Um... 
Fresh Havoc on reload from empty, increased base damage by plus 6, and stacks 2 times, so that's 12 damage. It's, it's okay, but it's a little bit underwhelming. So we're going to go with zeroed in here. Alrighty, I think that is everything about the Soma Prime. Now, I have a few slides I want to show before we get into the gameplay, because one of the things you have to ask yourself with the Soma Prime, well, is it worth it? Is it even worth going into the Incarnate form? Because the non-incarnate, these are red crits, right? This is a red crit build. In fact, it's not even a red crit build. It's exclamation builds, right? You get like red crit with exclamation points super friggin' easy with the uh, non-incarnate. Um, but with the incarnate, you're only at yellow yellow crits. So why the hell are you you're gonna go into incarnate? And that's what I asked myself this morning. I didn't think it would be worth going into the incarnate form. Uh, you know, why am I gonna do a yellow crit build when I could be doing a red crit build? Um, but I, I didn't want to just assume that, and I wanted to have some testing to back it up. And my testing actually, uh, like, enlightened me a bit. It's still not amazing. Like, it's still not amazingly more powerful than the non-incarnate. In fact, it's about the same. Uh, but we'll go over that, that data we have here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the uh, first slide we have here. You ready, guys? Here we go. Okay, so the Soma Prime, this is non-incarnate versus incarnate. These are kill counts for five minute runs. I did these runs on Void, Mott, Steel Path. I always chose a tile set that had two to three entry points. So the non-incarnate um, runs, I never switched to incarnate mode. And the incarnate runs, I switched to incarnate mode the instant I got full incarnate bar. Okay, so the non-incarnate runs, um, 373, 385, and 488 kills in three runs for a total of 1,246. There was one run that I had gotten earlier on where it was very high, it was 512, but the tile set, the tile set did have two entry points, but it was like just a hallway. And so it was like a godly tile set. So I, I felt like that was a little bit disingenuous to keep in the, uh, uh, the kill counts just because like none of the other runs had that godly of a tile set. Um, but then again, the very next mission I did was that 488 run, which is pretty damn close to 512. So maybe the, the high 300s were actually the outliers just being a lower. Uh, I'm not really too sure there. Um, so I just kept that separate, that 512 run. I didn't add it into there, but I just wanted to, uh, include that in our little data here. So the Incarnan runs, again, I switched to Incarnan immediately after getting full bar, every time. Got 403 kills, 434 kills, 445 kills in three runs for a total of 1,282 kills. So we see that there is like almost no difference. I mean, there's a lot of subjectivity for me doing these runs. If I was to redo these tests, there is a chance that I do worse on the Incarnan. There's a chance I do a lot better on the non-Incarnan and maybe it wins out. Uh, so, you know, again, there's a lot of subjectivity and, uh, at the end of the day, they're super close. They're super freaking close. So I, I think it's really up to you. Do you just want to run around with the non-incarnate? Cool. If you want to run with the, you want to run around in the incarnate, that's cool too. I think it also is going to depend on the ribbon you get. If you get a ribbon that's like super high multi-shot, you would obviously want to use the incarnate form most of the time instead of the non-incarnate. Or you get a ribbon that has like crazy magazine capacity, you might want to stick with the uh, non-incarnate form. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let me go back to regular gameplay here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do, um, and it's just because when I do my research on these weapons, I check forums and a lot, oh my goodness, so many forums say that the uh, Hadasatya mod doesn't work on the incarnate form. They're like, you know, the... Incarnate or, or the non incarnate, it's, it's red crits. And then when I switch to the incarnate, Hadasatya doesn't work anymore. I, I think it's because a lot of, I don't want to say a lot of people, but some people just don't understand how criticals work. And so I have a, a slide that will explain it for people that don't know. Some people may know this and you could skip ahead, that's fine. Um, but if you don't know this, I'm going to kind of explain how criticals work and why, why this is red crits. And all of a sudden, when we switch to incarnate, this is, uh, you know, doo doo yellow crits. So just keep in mind that the, let me switch to a blank config here. Keep in mind that the non-incarnate has a 30% base crit chance. 
and the Incarnate has a 10% base crit chance, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and switch to my second slide that I have here. You ready, guys? Here we go. All right, this is math with salt. We're going to explain how crit chance works. So we're talking about the Incarnate mode now, okay? So the Incarnate mode has that 10% base crit chance. When you see CC, that's just crit chance. Okay, so we'll talk about the Hadasatya buff first, which at maximum can be 500% crit chance. So if a weapon has 10% base crit chance and you add a 500% crit chance buff, that just basically times is that 10% by 5, which is a 50% critical chance increase from Hadasatya. Uh, remember that Hadasatya fluctuates. It's not always 500%. That's at absolute max. It's going to be much lower uh, to begin with. Okay, now galvanized scope is that next uh, slide here. So 10% base chance again. And galvanized scope, when it when you're at full stacks, is a 320% crit chance buff. So a 320% crit chance buff on a weapon with a 10% base crit chance equals a plus 32% crit chance increase. Okay, so so far from Hadasatya, we have the plus 50%. From uh, Galvanized Scope, we have plus 32%. And the next one here, the, the third row, is going to be our critical delay. It's, it's that little corrupted mod that gives us 200% crit chance. So 200% crit chance on a weapon that has a 10% base crit chance equals a 20% crit chance increase. And then the final row, we just add them together. So we add our Hadasatya. 50%. We add our galvanized scope, 32%. We add our critical delay, 20%. And you can't forget about the actual critical chance that you get on the weapon itself, which is the little 10% base. Means that after uh, all of these are factored in, we have a 112% critical chance buff. Now, keep in mind, it's not always going to be 112 because the 50% you get from Hadasatya fluctuates. Uh, galvanized scope sometimes you could be losing a stack here and there so you're going to be you know falling off by a few uh few percent points here and there um but at max strength will be at 112 which is full yellows and a 12 percent chance to produce a orange okay so we should be seeing full yellows and a 12 percent chance to, to produce an orange now I know I've said this like three times now. When Hadasatya is not maxed, we're not going to get that 50, so you still might see some whites. Okay. Um, also, I use ChatGPT to um, create that image. I just typed in like image of a child eager, eager to learn, and I got this creature that was presented to me. So that was kind of fun. All right. We're going to go back to gameplay. All righty. Um, so I'm going to show this in 10 minutes of gameplay. I'm going to use both modes. I'm just going to kind of show off what they both look like. I'll probably mostly use the Incarnate. I think I do favor the Incarnate a bit more than the uh, non-Incarnate, but I want to show both of them off. I want to show that the non-Incarnate is super easy red crits, and the uh, Incarnate, even though it seems weaker, does basically the same, or even maybe a little tiny bit more. All right, I'm going to do this on a big dumb Anaros with no Archon Shards that increase weapon performance. No mods or Arcanes on the Anaros that increase weapon performance. And with a pet with no Sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that increase weapon performance. Alrighty, let me stop running my mouth. Let's get in there. So I'm going to start by um, using the non-incarnate for a bit and just show you show you what that they looks like. Just shut down all systems. I'm sending life support capsules your way. Oh my goodness, Salt! You you are on your uh, your friggin' empty. You're on your empty uh, configuration. What an idiot. What an idiot, Salt. What are you doing, you freaking dummy? I'm like, why Why do I have screen shake? Why is my screen shaking around? Why is nothing dying? It's because of this. What the hell are you doing, Salt? All right. 
I'm too far. I'm too far into this video. I'm not restarting, guys. I refuse. I'm throwing protest. I'm not restarting. You're going to have to live with me uh, spending 15 seconds of your time. These are worthy foes. Underestimate them at your peril. Life support has been cut off. They're trying to choke you out. Hold on. I'm sending auxiliary life support. So we'll use the uh, non-incarnate for a bit. And then we'll switch over to the Incarnate. And again, they, they get built out the exact same way. You're just going to be favoring different Riven stats, uh, one or the other. So you can basically choose the one you, the way you want to play based on how lucky or unlucky you get with Ribbons. <laughs> if you get like multi-shot as like a big old chunky stat, you might want to use the Incarnate. And if you get like magazine size somewhere, you might want to use the non-Incarnate. I think after this we'll switch to the um yeah let's let's switch to the incarnate here. So the incarnate is gonna be a yellow crit with some oranges when we're at full hot asatya. But we're gonna be at full hot asatya. Um what are we at right now? I'm at I'm already at full, and it was before 150 shots in the mag. So you're at full hot asatya way quicker with the incarnate, but the uh, crit tier you're at is much lower. Although you still have chunky, chunky crit damage. And that's why you still build it out for crit. Because you still have ridiculous crit damage. In fact, you actually have more crit damage on the um, Incarnate build. Alright, let's fill this up again and then switch to Incarnate. Because the uh, Incarnate shoots a little bit slower, if you were to get Fire Rate on your Riven, it's also not a bad thing. I still wouldn't put Fire Rate on the weapon, but if you were to get Fire Rate on your Riven, I wouldn't be too butthurt about it. I'd, I'd be pretty happy with uh, Fire Rate on the Incarnate version because it's, it shoots slower. On the non-Incarnate, I think you're going to waste uh, ammo by putting Fire Rate. I think you're going to waste ammo and it's actually going to hurt you because you're not going to be getting the most out of Hadasatya. We'll stay in non-incarnate for a bit here. I shouldn't have reloaded there. I don't know why I manually reloaded. That was kind of dumb on my part. We'll do one more magazine of the non-incarnate, and then we'll switch back to the incarnate. Right, we got our little auto shotgun out again. We're ready at full hot asat, yeah, like within like 20, 30 shots.
All right, remember, when we get to uh, 10 minutes, the Tenora Prime, what Optronics wanted to see the difference between the Tenora and the, and the Soma, the Tenora Prime hit about, what was it, 701? Yeah, 701 kills. I have it written down in front of me. So we're hoping the Soma uh, beats out the Tenora. I'm pretty sure it will, just because, you know, the Tenora doesn't... The Tenora is a good weapon. It just does not have a Incarnate mode, so it doesn't get, like, all the extra benefits. It's still a good weapon, though. You know, the Janora is still worth building out. It's just not going to beat some of these other weapons. Now, let's do another mag of the Incarnan, and then we'll go back to non incarnate for a bit. Is that violence? The Incarnan's also better at dealing with acolytes. The non Incarnan, um, the machine gun mode, I'm just going to call them machine gun mode and shotgun mode, it might be easier than, than me saying Incarnan, non Incarnan. Um, but the machine gun mode feels like your basic machine gun or assault rifle against the acolytes. It's very average to below average. The Incarnan, it's still not amazing against the acolyte, but it's way better than the machine gun mode. Maybe we'll change our scenery up. Let's move to a different spot. Let's move in this big room here. This big room might might hurt our uh, kill per minute, though, because we're not lining enemies up as much. I don't know. I don't want the Tenora to beat us. I don't think it will, but... Let's do like one more mag of the uh, machine gun, and then we'll go back to the shotgun. Hunter munitions would also be quite good. It's just that you you're so limited on mod mod space on this weapon because there's a lot of good mods that like want to compete for slots, but you can't really fit hunter munitions. Like you could put it over bladed rounds, but then if you're using the um, machine gun mode, you also, like, are competing with magazine capacity, which, which could go over bladed rounds. So, uh, this also has pretty good, like, natural slash value. Like, so you are still getting slash, even though you, you don't have hunter munitions on, you're actually getting natural slash. So, I don't know, I feel like hunter munitions is the weakest one out of those three. Um, magazine capacity, uh, bladed rounds, and hunter munitions. I think mag capacity or bladed rounds are the stronger ones. I said I was going to go to shotgun mode, wasn't I? After this mag, we'll go back to shotgun mode. I got a minute and a half left. Try to get these numbers up. Let's see where, where we finally uh, sit at there. So some of the good weapons we've been testing have been hitting around like 900 kills. Some of the really, really good weapons we've been testing have been hitting about like 1,100 kills. 1,200 even. So we'll see where this one sits.
20 seconds left. We're at 10 minutes. Let's head. Let's find where extraction is first. Up above or up above? No, it's over here. Okay, let's see. 948. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It hit with the other uh, good weapons in the game. It, it didn't get as good as some of like the meta meta weapons we've done, but it's in the it's in the good category. It's in the good category. So definitely beat the Tenora too. It beat the Tenora by about uh, 250 kills. So that was a little bit expected. You know, the the again the Soma has a Incarnan, that gives it some extra buffs. The Tenora doesn't, so eh. A valuable lesson. Yeah, I like, I like the Soma. I like the Soma. I think it's it's pretty good. Uh, both modes are really good. Both modes are really cool. Both modes act and kill per minutes are almost exactly the same. So it really, I feel like it just depends on what ribbon you get. If you get a ribbon that has stats that favor one more than the other, then you switch to the, the one over the other one. That's that's really it. So uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, consider giving it a like. If you haven't subbed yet, um, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. All right.